sometimes people just want to do the sexiest thing. They just want to contribute, like, to the most, you know, th the, the show that's going to get, like, the most recognition. Um, one of the things I really appreciate about David is that, you know, he, he funds things like that, but he also funds infrastructure and funds funds the things that aren't necessarily going to be the sexiest, but that are essential uh, to, to the life of the organization and to what the organization contributes to its listeners or to its readers. David really appreciates just the importance of public media in, in the national discourse. Mm -hmm. um, he, he appreciates the place of public media in the larger role of media and appreciates the role of public media in the national conversation. It's thanks to David that Media Impact Funders is as vibrant and robust and strong of an organization and group that, that it is today. David is really, in my mind, the ambassador of the whole field of storytelling and philanthropy. Uh, when I first started at the Skoll Foundation, um, this was part of my mandate, but not something I had a lot of experience with. And David was one of the first to reach out and welcome me into this field and to invite me to events and to encourage me to become an active part of it and to have the confidence to not, to not wait um, and to really jump in and, and become um, a part of the community. And I haven't looked back. My sense of him, and I don't know him well, um, is that he always put kind of the organization in the field first. It wasn't about him. It was about kind of the larger um, goal and mission of bringing organizations and funders together to improve and strengthen all of our work. Certainly early on in any discussion, one of David's points of entry to any kind of project is how can his support of the project leverage other support to the project? Mm -hmm. What can he do not only to sort of make it a stronger project, but to make it more palatable and interesting uh, and, and by way of example uh, say, oh, well, Wincoat's supporting this, David Haas is supporting this, uh, this is something we need to take seriously and maybe get behind. David's all about breaking down barriers and silos and boxes about different projects since he works across uh, a variety of projects, some of which uh, I might be familiar with and some of I have no idea about, but he really looks for points of contact and connection and, and ideally points of collaboration, but how one thing can inform another, how one might work with another. Um, and you know, I think what's unique about David in working uh, with projects that he supports or engages with uh, is the dialogue. Everything with David's unorthodox. There's, <laughs> there's really not a point. I think our relationship, our, our, our relationship, has, <laughs> just been, has been unorthodox. Yeah. He, he doesn't. He, he, he does not. Uh, he, he, the guy knows calculus. He does not know linear programming. <laughs> right. When I think about David Haas, I think about somebody that has been thinking about this field in the most sophisticated and strategic way of almost anybody that I know for the last 30 years. He has been a leader among all of us who are working in public media and thinking about impact and thinking really about what film can do. Well, you know, David has an expansive mind. Um, uh, so um, I, al we, I always leave a discussion with David. We always end up in a different place than where we started. It's always an interesting place, and it's always a place that's worthy of uh, further uh, dialogue. But I'm always amazed at um, the expansiveness of his mind.